is an empty place without a hurrah. Communications officer, I love you. There's no one else for me. It's true. With every dial you turn, my desire starts to burn. Your enterprising work gives you no breather. I call you fair maiden, but you're neither. My frequencies are open, and most of all, I'm hoping you will be my Star Trek fans, you know where they work out. The, the, he's dead, Jim. Oh, yeah. It's... Loud girl, loud girl. Come on, come on. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, every Star Trek episode ever played. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to seek out new life, to build big radios, to boldly go where no sponsor has gone before. <laughs> Only dogs can hear that note, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Captain's log, started 36.24.6. Carry the four. <laughs> We are proceeding along neutral territory, looking at Romulan's airspace, looking for Nazis, rock monsters, <laughs> doomsday machines, any darn trouble we can get into. I assembled every important person that ever appeared in Star Trek. Captain, Jim, Bone, Spock, damn it! <laughs> Jim, Bone, Bone, Spock, Captain. Jim! Bones. Who did I leave out? Chekhov. Captain. Chekhov. Didn't you write some plays in the mid-1800s? I got them. We're approaching a planet. It's green, it's round, it's got lumps on it. We've got to go down and investigate. Spock. Jim. Bones. Jim! We've got to beam down. It's a very dangerous enterprise. There could be... Mystery, murder, death, unknowns, great unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen. It is extremely dangerous. So naturally, I will take with me every single important person. <laughs> we all have to go down together, stay as a group. One big target. <laughs> and Yeoman Smith. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who's going to die. <laughs> 
beating down. <laughs> Cut the gym. Hmm. See that green glowing glob over there? Yeoman Smith, check it out. <laughs> We're going to turn our backs and talk for a minute. Jim, Captain Spock, boys. He's dead, Jim. Good. <laughs> Beating up to the planet. We lost Yeoman Smith. Oh, well. We have 434 other Yeomans to go. <laughs> Good news for Star Trek fans. You probably heard they're making another film that's already made. In fact, it's coming out called Star Trek IV. Uh, they have, they're already working on another film. They've signed Shatner. Perhaps we'll get real celebrities to play the other roles. We'll now take you aboard the Enterprise, Star Trek V, in search of cash. William Shatner at the helm. Captain's log. Start a two, four, seven, six point five. Something strange has happened. Since passing through a cosmic cloud, I've noticed a peculiar change in the behavior of my crew, although their faces seem the same. The personalities have altered yet somehow. <laughs> they seem familiar. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Kirk out. Mr. Chekhov, Warp Factor One. Well, excuse me, sir. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Chekhov is in the sick bay. More to get in noise. All right, more. Oh, horror! Put him on the screen. Mr. Spa. Analysis, please. Ah! Ha! 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 Let me get a closer look. You got me, boss! Spock, what's the matter with you? Use your instruments. Oh, yeah. What am I, an idiot? Uh-oh, it looks like a big follow got Oh, who try to raise communication? I don't know what's happening. But when I get back from sick bay, I want some answers. Psst. Psst. Sick bay. Psst. Bones. Bones. We must talk. The ship is being pursued through a neutral zone by an unknown vessel. And my crew is all gone mad. Over 400 men and women on board, and yet I feel I've known a doctor but you, boom. You gotta help. Well, 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 lucky here, but I Looks like the old cabin's getting a little paranoid. <laughs>
Bones, you don't understand. My ship is in danger. I don't need rest. I need all crew. of action. Check off. War Factor 1. Get me warm factor. All right, all right. He's such a baby. <laughs> What's happening to my ship? Uhura! Put this maniac alien on the screen. I want to know who's responsible. I'm James. T. Kirk of the Starship. I want to know who you are. What do you want with my ship? Of their hospitality, but found too late it was the 
final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Booby Prize. Its five-year mission? To sell t-shirts, toy phasers, plastic communicators, and anything else we can think of. To seek out new life in old plots and complications. To boldly go where everyone has gone before. Star Trek. Captain's Log, Stardate 6935.2. We are in orbit around the planet Schwartz. Engineering the Captain Jerk! Engineering the Captain Jerk! Jerk here, what is it, Snotty? Captain, the warp drive engines are generating excess antimatter. The pods are overloading now. If it continues at this rate, they're gonna be responsible for the safety of the ship. I want answers, mister. Well, I tried shoving a wiener in the warp drive, but it didn't do a bit of good. By the by, would you have a wee bit of mustard up on the bridge? Mr. Schlock? No mustard, Captain. Analysis, Schlock? It would appear that Lieutenant Snot is about to eat Wiener without mustard. As always, your logic is impeccable, Mr. Schlock. Dr. McGoy? I'm a doctor, not a scriptwriter! Sensors, Mr. Schlock? Computer data coming in now. It's exactly what we need, Jim. A colossal negative space turkey of infinite power coming right at us at warp factor 11. Commence evasive action, Mr. Lulu? Yes, Captain Jack. Evasive action's ineffective, Captain. The turkey is turning with us and closing rapidly. Estimated time of impact? Approximately 16.24 seconds, Captain. Uh, then again, I could be a little off. Readings, Mr. Schlock. Off the scale, Captain. I have not encountered this phenomenon before. Damage report, Lieutenant Minora. Bridge to engineering. It's not here, Captain. What's not there, Snotty? I said it's not here, Captain. Snotty, give me full power. Get us out of here fast. Oh, I cannot do it. The toilets are backed up into the warp drive mechanism. It'll take time to make repairs. Hmm, fascinating. What, Mr. Schlock? Uh, the program's almost over, and you haven't yet found an alien to fall in love with. Recommendation? I'd suggest we beam down to the planet's surface and hang out, Captain. Logical, Mr. Schlock. Perfectly logical. Mr. Lulu, you've got the con. Thank you, Captain Jack. Into the elevator, Mr. Schlock. Elevator, transporter room. I'm fine. How are you? Elevator, I said transporter room. I'm fine. How are you? Oh, no, forget I'm it. Fine. Elevator to engineering. Beam us down from here, Snotty. Aye, aye, Captain. You're locked on coordinates now. Energize, Mr. Snot. Remarkable. What do you make of it, Mr. Schlock? There is no record of any such civilization as this on the planet Schwartz, Capitan. Look, Schlock, here comes a car, and feast your Vulcan squinties on that driver. Far out, Captain Jerk. Oh, looks like the Starfleet's in. Want a lift, sailor? As a matter of fact, I do. Well, I'll say goodbye here, Schlock. Now you'll have what you've always wanted, command of the booby prize. And you'll have what you always wanted, Jimbo. And what is that, Mr. Schlock? A bleach blonde in red convertible on planet Schwartz. <laughs> right on, Schlock. Say bye-bye to Starfleet Command for me, and I'll see you on Hollywood Squares. Bye-bye, Jim. Say, Space Fox, what's your sign? Oh, dangerous curves. I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> Schlock to booby prize. Not here, Mr. Schlock. What's not there, Lieutenant Snot? I said it's not here, Mr. Schlock. That's Captain Schlock. Why? And make it one to beam up. Stardate 3.142857... Ah, uh, oh, forget about it. This is Captain Quirk on the Starship Intercourse, thrusting its way through space on another penetrating mission. Captain, Captain, what's that in space? A head? Huh? Oh, no, it's another space turkey. Darn this solar system, anyway. Nothing but space turkeys. Get the phasers on that bird. Captain, Captain, all the stars have gone out. No, you fool. You've leaned on the button. Turn the viewer back on. Now, get the phasers on that bird. I am an angel of the Lord. Baked him good. Oh, wow. It looks just like Thanksgiving out there. Don't think about it, Lieutenant Hunky. I can't help thinking about it. Last Thanksgiving was rotten. Just that food supplement pill with turkey written on it. It's not the same, Captain. It's not the same. 
Turn off the view screen. We're out here, and this is where we are. Why can't I think about it? I'm an officer, too. You've got enough to think about. You've got a whole dashboard to take care of. Captain, the space turkey has knocked us slightly off course. Well, Lemon? It's Lenin, sir. Now, we must get back on course. It's Lenin, sir. Did you hear me say that? Uh, uh, y yes, uh, Linen. Uh, we must get back on course. Yes, sir. We must get back on course. Do you want to check the reading? Uh, yes. Let me see. The quick brown fox. That is the wrong reading. Huh? Take this. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yes. Now, nah, my communicator. <coughs> get me engineering. That's my box, Captain. Oh, uh, pardon me, Lieutenant Eubangi. Uh, allow me to apologize profusely. Just take your hands off my box. Captain? Y yes, Mark. May I remind you that since we are traveling at a rate of WAP factor 3, that our collision with that turkey 38 seconds ago uh -huh. has put us 15 billion miles off course. Well, good heavens, Smock, why wasn't I told of this earlier? <coughs> this is the captain speaking. Connect me with engineering. I'm sorry, but that line is busy. This is the captain. Give me engineering. I'm sorry, sir, but that line is busy. But I have a direct line. I'm the captain. <coughs> Operator. 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 Did you hear that, Smock? Are my people putting me on? I don't know, sir. As you know, I am a Vulgarian, huh? and jokes are beyond me. Uh. <laughs> hmm, that's the first time I've ever heard him laugh. Hmm. Oh, we, we, we must contact engineering. My God, 15 billion miles off course. 23 billion miles off course now, sir, if my calculations are correct. Huh? And they always are. <laughs> this is the captain speaking. Give me engineering. <laughs> This is the captain speaking. Who is it? It's the captain. We're 23 billion miles off course. 29 billion. 29 billion. Shh. Operator? Operator! I'm sorry, sir, but that line is boozy. <laughs> Smock, they don't realize what a mess we're in. 29 billion miles off course. Captain, this is engineering. Lieutenant Limey speaking. Do you realize we're 34 billion miles off course? Limey, I just called you. What's going on down there? Captain, according to my calculations, we're 38 billion miles off course. Thank you, Smock. Why are you pinching our eyes together, Captain? It doesn't help the situation, nor does it have any physiological effect. Highly illogical behavior. You Earth people. Uh. Captain, where did you go? We're 45 billion miles off course. I'm still here, Limey. Lieutenant Eubangi, have the computer compute course correction coordinates. Engineering, curse creation co that curse, yeah, engineering standby. It's about time, Captain. By now we must be 52 billion miles off course. We're traveling faster than light, you know. Lieutenant Eubangi, where are the course readings? Huh? Where? Lieutenant Eubangi, where the hell did she go? She went to church, sir. Church? She can't be. It's Tuesday afternoon. It's her sect, you know. I am aware of her sex, Lieutenant. No, no, her sect, her sect. She's a monk with a poodle, you know, kimiwaki too, la. Mm. When will it ever end? Captain, Captain, all the stars have gone out. Lieutenant Hunky, if you lean on that button once more, I will have you ejected into hyperspace through the garbage chute. Take over the control, Smock. I'll find Lieutenant Eubangi myself. Aye, aye, sir. Now, oh, let's see. Where did she go now? She's in the ship's apps. The ship's what? The chapel. The meditation area. Although I personally find religion highly illogical. <sighs> well, I'll, I'll have to take the elevator down. Oh, these problems. Let's see, I'm never on this level. Uh, maybe it's in here. Oh, wally. Oh, wally. Huh? Uh, oh, wally. You can't do that oh, in there. Wally. This is a broom oh, closet. Wally. We're engaged. Well, disengage and report back to your stations. Humph. Oh, I must be down Jesus, the corridor no to the left. At all. Oh, I've got to stop talking to myself. Uh, but, but where's Lieutenant Ebangi? Chaplain? Chaplain! Yeah! Oh, that mask, you scared me. I thought this was the a uh, uh, chapel. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle. Since there's only one chapel on the Starship Intercourse, huh? I've become very adept at a number of different religious services. Oh, I'm yeah. afraid I get quite immersed in my role. Huh. Oops, there, I've spattered blood all over your tights. Yeah. Don't worry, it's only pig blood It comes off with a little lemon and salt. Right. You know, it's really wonderful to be a chaplain in outer space. Huh? Space is so wonderful, so vast, huh. so infinite, huh? so religious. I was just thinking the other day when I was doing the terribly complicated flip ziggy service what for the worshippers from Zircon's Zircon. Fire. Oh, which reminds me, Captain. 
There is a matter of extreme importance of which I must speak to you. Huh? It is a matter of the psychic morale of the ship. Who? Many of the enlisted men, how do you Americans say it, the little people, huh? are undergoing a great deal of strain. Rampants are rumored about the ship. Ah. Some of the men are saying that the dietitian is putting saltpeter in the food supplement tablets. Mm. Then, there is the problem of beaming down. Huh? The enlisted men feel that it is not fair that only the officers get to leave the ship. Ah. They are, as they put it, going stir-crazy, a quaint term, don't you agree? Uh -huh. Why, even just a moment ago, during the religious service, I overheard a rumor to the effect the ship is over 125 billion miles off course. It is? It is. Isn't that wonderful? Ah. Space is so vast. There are so many possibilities. Uh, Chaplain, this is an emergency. I, I must speak with Lieutenant Yabangi. Oh, dear. She seems to have left. Oh, God. Why, I'll bet she's back in the control room right now. Ah. You know, if you keep calm instead of turning purple like that, all your problems would solve themselves. Captain. What is it, Spock? We've located Lieutenant Eubanki. Huh. She's locked in the woman's room on level four. Oh, no. We've sent a janitor over there with a skeleton key. We should have her out any moment. But this is an emergency. Can't you do anything faster? Can't you blast her out? But the woman's room on level four is only three by three. We wouldn't huh? want to reduce her to atoms. That would be illogical. Listen, Smock, we must act quickly. The ship is already 125 billion miles off course. 140 billion miles off course, sir. Well, we, we must do something quickly anyway. Say, can't you operate the computers yourself? Of course I can operate the computers. I am a vulgarian. Well, why didn't you? You didn't ask me. After uh, all, I'm only the squire. You're uh, the knight. You didn't order me, uh, Captain. Listen, pixie ears. Get on that computer! Deposit ten more cents for another five or, or three minutes. Whoopee! I've really got to have that operator replaced. Excuse me, Chaplain. I must return to the bridge. Yahweh, watch over you. Mohammed be with you. Amgawa, guide your arrow. May Vishnu be within you. May Christ be above you. And may Umbli above the seven moons light your way. Oh, if only I can get up to the main control room in time. Well, Smock, how's the computer doing? I'm programming it now. Something seems to be wrong. Listen to this. Uh -huh. Maybe if I do this. Oh, lights are going out! Take your hands away from your eyes, Lieutenant Hunky. All right, damage control, give me an estimate on the damage. Well, Captain, it's easily $27 million worth of damage. Oh, $27 million worth of damage? Arr! Well, actually, it's only one tube that costs 15 cents. But huh? The service charge is enormous since we're so many light years away from the service area. Huh? That is, providing they can find us anyway, seeing as we're 200 billion miles off course. Oh, What's going on here? Lieutenant Eubangi, if you leave the control room again without telling me, I'll... I'll... Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll quit. Oh, oh no. Oh, I, I don't I don't feel that way. No, uh, here, have a seat. Make yourself comfy. Uh, you look nice this afternoon, evening, morning, eh, whatever it is. Huh? So hard to tell on shipboard. <laughs> when did I sleep last, anyhow? Why are you pinching your eyes together like that, Captain Honey? Can you fix the computer, please? <laughs> Why, of course, I'll just stick this little old bobby pin in here. Oh, thank God. Huh. Stand by for change of course. <laughs> Engineering! Oh, no! Quiet, everybody. It's the captain. Put your clothes on, Lionel. It's all right. The viewer's not turned on. Stand by for new coordinates. What's he talking about? I'm so high. Limey, you're demoted. Oh, well then you'll have to get someone else, won't you? <laughs> huh? Oh, oh no, no, you're not demoted. Uh, uh, you're, you're advanced. Just get us back on course. Huh? What's that sound on the elevator? Hey, uh, what are you people doing here? You aren't allowed on the bridge. You aren't even officers. Stick it up your asteroid, Captain Quirk. Mutiny, mutiny. Freedom now. Tired of trying to string beads in free fall. Me 
Ito. Ito. In your nebula. Take him down to the beam room. Let's get him off the ship. Lieutenant Smiso, Matzo, Hunky, get these people out of here. Take over, take, take over, over, take over, over take, take over. over. Smock, smock. Ah, he's unconscious. Take him to the beam room. How will you hurt? Now, Captain, we're going to beam you down to one of the large asteroids in the Phenomene Cluster. We'll, of course, inform a space trawler of your coordinates, but since we're a quarter of a trillion miles off course, God knows when he'll find you. You can't do this! Stardate 3.14285. Ah, the heck with it. This is laundry assistant third class Maggie McApron. We've taken over. The ship is ours. We're setting out for the planet Euphoria. We're going to get off this blasted thing and have some fun. Whoopee, Euphoria! Fingers on my thimbles, make a noise. Rooty-tooty-tooty, all the boys. <laughs> But all the worst Star Trek jokes. Oh, how could you tell such bad jokes? Yep, they're pretty bad. The first one is, which side of a triple has the most hair? That's awful. That's a terrible joke. Which side? Yeah, outside. The Vulcans say... Live long and prosper. What do the Klingons say? I don't know what, but I know it's awful. Live long and prosper. Oh, Go away. Oh. Ugh, I don't want to hear anymore. Go away. Why is the Enterprise like toilet paper? <gasps> I've heard it already. Don't tell me that. I've heard it already. Oh. That's the answer. Because it circles your anus to wipe out Klingons. Ah, that's a terrible. <laughs> oh, wait, that's the worst. <laughs> oh, no. I know one that's worse. I don't want to hear it. What is it? What's the difference between a Vulcan and a revolving door? Oh, no. I've heard that one. It is the worst. Go away. Don't tell it. Go away. Going to tell the answer. No. Oh, yep. Oh. Uh, the difference Lift between the a Vulcan and a revolving ah. door is... Ah. is that a... From 66 to 69, there was a show about the Starship Enterprises we all know. With funny ears and beetle boots and phaser guns that we could shoot, but Trek got canned cause the ratings were so low. Letters from the fans didn't get the shows for season on. The Star Trek crew, now unemployed, made cash as sapphire cons. When the ranks of Trekkies grew and grew, we noticed that some fans do too. Cause they nibble just like tribbles while they're watching Trek reruns. The fans all got together for a new writing campaign. To get a TV movie made, but not one likes Spock's brain. The network told them, go, go to hell. hell! But then found Star Trek toys sold well, but there's no market in sci-fi films today. Just then, when things seemed darkest, there was a light saver. The highest grossing movie in the world is called Star Wars. They read through the old Star Trek scripts that wrote one that's a bore. Star Trek the motion picture's trash, but it should make a lot of cash. The crew will wear pajamas and we'll make one of them ball. It's making money. Quick, let's make a sequel. Well, we have this other old script called, what is it? Space Seed? Yeah, and Ricardo Monomar just happens to be on the back by doing a Cordova commercial. Get clean, get clean. So you know what that means, don't you? Uh, what? Star Trek 2! They'll kill off Khan and kill off Spock and make them cry, you'll see. We'll 
sell them Star Trek handkerchiefs and then make Star Trek 3. Kirk has a wife and has a son, we'll sell them dolls of everyone. Genesis is a bomb that's lots of fun, unlike Star Trek 1. Shut up! Hey, wait a minute, looky here, there's money to be made. Our model kits and other shit Like gum cards they can trade They'll wonder if Spock's dead You see, we'll sell the rights to pay hey, TV. TV And with the money We'll make Star Trek 3 Great, just great Now Nimoy won't come back Try to tell him he can direct it But he's dead, Jim As a director, too But don't worry People will come just to see if Spock lives Plus his little pointy ear Star Trek 3! With Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock and Doc McCoy. Oh, oh. With Scotty Chekhov, Uhura, and Sulu too. Oh, oh. And Savick's gonna join the crew, but not the one from Star Trek 2. And Major, who is Roddenberry's wife? It took a while, but Paramount has now turned face. With indie films and Trek films about outer space Trek 4 will make their wallets fat With Trek time trips and Savix Brat An anniversary gift for all the fans Start a two, four, seven, six point five. There's no one here. Spock, Bone, Scotty, they're all gone. I've been left alone. There is, however, an annoying beep that is pursuing me. I don't know when it will come next. Wait for the beep. Captain's Log, Stardate 2783-94, Mark 243326. With each run, rerun, the Stardates get longer. Nobody knows why. And the one scene I left out that I always like is uh, on Star Trek. It, there's always a scene like this, when they don't beam down to a planet. You have a scene, well, it's another dull, routine, boring mission in space, and... Captain, there is an alien marker buoy only four parsecs off our course. Mr. Sulu, prepare to divert course and destroy the marker buoy. Jim! Damn it! Bones! What's the mission of this vessel? To seek out and contact alien life and interfere with the normal development of their culture. <laughs> if I have to destroy a few alien marker buoys, I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> Enterprise, that marker buoy was Hanar's senior project. Captain's Log, 302783. The Enterprise is in standard orbit around Gamma Hydra 4. Okay, first of all, they're always in standard orbit, right? Whatever that is. I just once I'd like to see this. Approaching Delta Epsilon 9. Standard orbit? No, Mr. Sulu lay in the weirdest bazaar orbit you can imagine. Sort of a cross across with the turn. One that comes dangerously close to the planet and then so far away we can't even scan it. Spock! How many ways are there to be killed on this planet? <laughs> Approximately five, Captain. Very good, Mr. Spock. You, myself, and five security guards will beam down. <laughs> what? Washburn, uh, you and your men beam down. We'll uh, be along in a minute. <laughs> what do you think, Spock? Should be safe now. Okay. So they all beam down. They get down there, and the first thing that happens, of course, is these incredibly primitive natives jump out from behind the rocks wearing furs, carrying laser guns, you know, and say, we're dumb natives and we have to destroy you with our computer god that was left here by the old ones. The old ones. It's always the something ones. The blue ones left us here. The tall ones taught us how to use sticks to kill people. The, the dull ones left us here. We fell asleep while they were explaining the machinery, and we've been that way for six millennium. You woke us up, Captain, so your ship must be destroyed in two hours, Captain! And there's not a damn thing we can do today! What was that, Scotty? I said, I'm not a bad lady again! you gotta try. I'll call you back in an hour. Okay, Kirk immediately doles out the responsibilities. Spock, here's six communicators that have been blown up. Put one together that works. I'm gonna go seduce the high priestess. <laughs> Which would you rather be? <laughs> and McCoy, of course, has nothing to do. Well, that's not true. He has two things to do in each episode, and we saw one of them. 
this similar scene. Washburn, uh, give me all your expensive equipment. Go into that uh, dark cave with strange energy reading it. He comes out in pieces, and McCoy's there. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> no kidding. He gets hit by a lightning bolt. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> I'm so glad we brought him along. And of course, the other thing is he pointed out, he always at some point is like, Bones, it's time for my physical. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a physician. I'm a doctor, not a... Fill in the blank, right? I'm a doctor, not a floor wax. Hey, hold on a minute. New Dr. McCoy's a doctor and a floor wax. <laughs> He's dead, Jim. Look, look at that shine. <laughs> So anyway, they try to work this out, and it never works. Kirk somehow screws it up, so Spock has to come in and out with the computer. Totally alien technology. Spock walks in. Spock, can you do anything? <laughs> well, actually, ca Captain, it's very similar to a Commodore VIC-20. <laughs> they got it. What a hip crowd. But then he can't turn it off, so they call him just go, Well, Scotty, come on. We hooked in every system in the ship, including the artificial gravity into the warp drive, and we couldn't break free. So now we're just floating around waiting to be destroyed. I don't even know how I'm talking to you. So, and then, depending on which season it was, they would have three different ways out, right? The first season, it always turned out that it was all some test by incredibly powerful super beings. And he'd beam down, oh, there's hope for you yet. We're not going to destroy you. Ping. <laughs> I believe in fairies. Sure. And then the second season, it was always Captain Kirk on the planet with dangerous explosives and a last minute beam up. What instrument on the Enterprise isn't working? <laughs> the transporter, of course. <laughs> da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Five, four, transporter's out. Three, two, now, detonate and energize. No, energize. Cross the shockwave, go after the bridge, we got him through. What a surprise, right? <laughs> and the third, because the first season, they were, they were just developing his character. They added a few things. Third season, they said, he's a Vulcan. He can only save them, no matter what. It's like, 400 lives, I should have been aware. It's all my, wait. Spock, don't Vulcans have the ability to transport through time, levitate their bodies, and juggle with one hand tied behind their back, blindfolded? Yes, Jim, but it requires immense concentration. You've got to try! <laughs> Very well, Captain, I'll try. Oh, I did it. It wasn't so hard after all, was it? <laughs> is it? Did anybody, just, just one last thing I wanted, did anybody have a favorite episode, by any chance? Oh, yeah. Well, name it, for God. <laughs> Okay, forget it. That's not mine. My favorite one, uh, which is similar to that, is the Changeling, the one with Nomad, which was, uh, for those of you that don't know, this cylindrical robot thing with superpowers that would, like, destroy anything that wasn't perfect. <laughs> and the way they get it to destroy itself is they make it make a mistake, and so it has to destroy itself because it's not perfect. And I always thought it would be great if they caught it on something really tiny and insignificant. Like, I am Nomad. I am perfect. You must be eliminated. I am Monad. Nomad. I am Nomad. Wait a minute! You mispronounced your name. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I was joking. Ah, ha, ha, ha. How's the Spock unit? Wait a minute. I am Nomad. I am Prefect. Perfect. Wait a minute. You made a mistake. You did not realize that you made a mistake. You did not realize that you did not realize. It's a recursive function. You've already made an infinite number of errors. Execute your prime function. Very well. No, wait. Beam them out. Yeah, we did it. Warp factor one. And the other thing about Spock that I always liked was not only could he do all this stuff, he knew the most obscure stuff. I mean, it would have been great on Jeopardy, am I right? The answer is 4.5. Ping! Yes, Mr. Spock. What is the lifespan of a Denevian flying devil? That's right, okay. In fact, I would like to see a Jeopardy episode with, with Mr. Spock, the HAL 9000 computer from 2001, and Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. <laughs> the answer is 41. Yes, Mr. Spock. What is the wingspan on a Queen of Warship? That's right, okay. And then they get to Final Jeopardy, and it's like, <laughs> or better yet, the final question. Terrible accident by a computer that caused the death of all the people on the Discovery. Yes, Mr. Spock. What is the L9000? That's right. Excuse me. Yes, L. I don't believe that was the correct answer. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it was. A HAL 9000 is never wrong. Well, you were this time. I'll disconnect your life support. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> they always do that on Johnny Carson. If he has a guest, he's not. You go, we'll be back. And they push the ejector seat. The guy's gone. <laughs> so they come back. Well, HAL's been disconnected. Now in Final Jeopardy, it's just Spock and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And the answer is 42. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, they come back. Okay, what do they have? Mr. Spock. What is six times seven? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not the answer we're looking for. You lose. Angry, Mr. Spock? Angry? No, there's uh, no anger, Captain. That's an emotion. <laughs> Fine, we'll replace that later. Listen. Okay, let's see what Obi-Wan Kenobi has. How many years must I wait in this desert? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. The judges say we can't accept that answer. You can accept that answer. We can accept that answer! <laughs> you can accept that answer! <laughs> 